If you're hand loading for NRL Hunter competition, you gotta make Power Factor. And in this video, we're gonna show you just how to do that. Kevin Gu here from UltimateReloader.com. I'm back with Travis Fox. Thank you for joining us, Travis. Hi, Gavin. Glad to be here. Good to see you guys. The Ultimate Reloader team, namely Travis, is hard at work getting ready for NRL Hunter matches. This is cool stuff. If people don't know what NRL Hunter is, let's give them the 10 second spiel. Okay, 10 seconds, here we go. NRL Hunter, different from PRS, they're putting you in a natural environment, you're having to build positions, you're having, first you're having to find targets and build positions and then engage those targets. And what you don't want is people doing the whole equipment race thing, trying to get around the whole spirit of the competition, which is realistic hunting-like yep. equipment uh, situations, shooting positions and all that. Exactly. So Travis has been putting together kind of, you know, all uh, all the different guidelines, all the different criteria that need to be met. And we've been working on things like the rifle, things like the ammo. And there's a few key rules to keep in mind. The first is the 16 pound weight limit for the rifle plus accessories for the open heavy class. Yeah. For open heavy, that's what I decided to go in because I'm gonna shoot one of Gavin's rifles because they're just awesome to shoot. Uh, we picked out a rifle. It's got a little bit heavier barrel on it, so we ended MTU up running contour, the, yeah. Yeah, the MQ contour. Ended up running the um, Element MG chassis, which kind of gets that weight down, and I can put weight in other areas. Mm -hmm. uh, Leopold Mark V, really great scope. Love that thing. So yeah, we actually thought about the Bergara MG Light because it's a 6.5 Creed more. Yep. It's got a carbon barrel. It's got the magnesium XLR Element 4.0 chassis. And that would give you similar options. But since we built this rifle specifically for competition and it has some characteristics that we like, kind of worth the weight penalty. Yeah, it's definitely well worth it. Yep. If you load your own ammunition, then you need to make what's called power factor. And we'll describe what power factor is. But if you have factory sealed ammunition, it's assumed that it's going to be, it's going to have some knockdown power right. and it's going to be a fair uh, ammunition to use in the competition. What you don't want people to do is using a super heavy rifle with super light recoiling ammunition, the yeah. kind of games that people play in PRS, PRS yeah. which is fine in PRS. If you want to shoot a 223 AI out of a 26 pound gun, you know, <laughs> yeah. Go that's, for it. that's definitely your choice. If you want to lug it around, if you want to have that kind of, you know, uh, signature on your hits and your misses and all that, it's, it's a game of trade-offs. But for NRL Hunter, it should really be all about hunter so let's talk about power factor bunch of different ways to calculate and express and enforce power factor yes nrl hunter has its own formula they do so the power factor for nrl hunter is your bullet grain weight mm -hmm. times the velocity and it has to make three hundred and eighty thousand. Mm -hmm. so three eight zero 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 yep and we did a little testing here on that to figure out what we could come up with, what's going to make it and what's not going to make it. Yeah, absolutely. So if we take an example, 140 grain projectile, say out of a 6.5 Creedmoor, times 2,850 feet per second, which would be smoking pretty good, yeah. would be 399,000. That's above 380,000. So that would be a pass. Let's talk about the components that we see here. You kind of worked with two different powders here. Three. Oh, three different powders. Three different powders. Like two different two bullets. Two different bullets. Yep. Yes. So we tried the 147 grain Hornady ELDM match mm -hmm. bullet and the Berger 140 hybrid target bullet. Mm -hmm. And then I took those two bullets and I played around with the three different powders here. You'll see we've got H4350, Vitavturi uh, N555, mm -hmm. and the Winchester Stayball. Came up with some good results. Interesting three powders. H4350, the de facto standard yeah. for 6.5 Creedmoor. N555 is Vitavuri's kind of uh, roughly equivalent powder to H4350. Stable 6.5 is kind of a different animal. It is. It is temperature stable, but it's a ball powder. Hodgson Winchester worked really hard on that to accomplish uh, that temperature stability with a ball powder. Now, the advantage with that is you can meter it really well. Yeah. Say if you're loading on a progressive. Some guys are gonna be loading on like a Dillon 550 Absolutely. or or equivalent, right? Yeah, that would work perfect because that stuff meters like water. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so some results. You did a whole bunch of shooting Yep. and got some chrono data. Really interesting to see how things landed here. Very much. <laughs> so the one thing I wanna say right off the bat is I got excellent results for groupings with all of these powders. So. If you can get one of these powders, I would not stress about mm -hmm. that at all. 
they all three of them shot very, very well. Both bullets shot very, very well. So this is not a one's better than another, but we did get some different results for meeting that power factor. And so you need to look at these charts that we have here and figure out where you want to be in this yep. and uh, just pick, pick and choose. And the temperature sensitivity is probably a good point because they're going to chrono your, your load at the event, right? Yes. So if, if you're loading and testing in 90 degree weather and you go over to Montana and for some reason it's 30 degrees, you're going to want to make sure yeah. that your velocity is going to still meet that uh, criteria. Yes. And we've done, Travis actually did a, an extreme temperature temperature sensitivity test here recently. So you're gonna wanna check out some of that data to see, you could kind of do almost a trend line to figure out what the projected velocity would be depending on that temperature sensitivity Absolutely. factor. So what we did here was uh, we took all of Travis's data, we inputted it into the spreadsheet and then did a sort by power factor from the lowest value to the highest value. And if you look at this chart here, we are starting at 340,000 at, at the bottom and going up to 410,000. So there's this stack of bars, right? And there's this very shallow slope there. We're just kind of zooming in on that area so that we can see the differences more clearly. And an interesting thing here is all of these meet power factor except for that lowest power efficient. factor load, which was stable 65, 42 and a half, 140 grain, uh, burger hybrid, right? It was just under 367,332. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And I would also note that the second the second charge that we chose, the N555 of 42 and a half, was it's right at the limit. And so you may want to be, be careful with that because you could get into a situation where you'd come in just under the limit. So yep. that one is, is one to note also. But the rest of them are all right there. And then if you will notice the 147 Hornady's, the factor on that is, is lower. So you have to have a lower velocity with the heavier bullet. All mm -hmm. of those made power factor quite yep. easily. And on that note, let's talk about physics for a second. So mass times velocity, which is this power factor number, is a momentum number. That's how you calculate momentum. With momentum, that momentum number is proportional to either the mass or the velocity, if you hold one constant, right? Whereas energy, you guys are used to talking about energy, right? Kinetic energy, one half mv squared, it's nonlinear. And I think what we're seeing here is the heavier bullets are favored. So to make power factor, my suggestion would be, based on our data and based on physics, that you look at those heavy for caliber yeah. bullets, go near max charge weight, and take some chronograph data. Yeah. Simple formula. Now, one thing about the heavier bullets and the power factor. Mm -hmm. If you get into a situation where there's a tie and you're tied with someone else, mm -hmm. the higher power factor will take that position. Mm -hmm. So somebody's running a 140 and you're running a 147 and your power factor is above theirs. If you get into a tie, oh. you then take that place. <laughs> so power factor breaks a tie. Yeah. Very, very interesting. So if someone's running a 6.5 PRC, they're gonna have an inherent advantage yeah. over the 6.5 cream yeah. or until you think about all of the site picture disruption right. and other factors yeah. with recoil. So it's so a, a trade-off, right? Exactly, <laughs> so this is exactly what I was gonna say. So this whole power factor thing is all designed on basically one factor mm -hmm. and it's recoil management. It's the shooter being able to get into position, build that position to engage that target and to manage that recoil and see what's going on, to see where their impact is, and then if they miss, that they make that correction. Mm -hmm. So you, it's all about recoil management. Man, I'm looking forward to doing one of these matches at some point. Yeah. So uh, yeah, if you click on that first link in the video description, we're gonna have the graph and, and all of the data for you to ponder more deeply. But in summary, uh, you're gonna wanna cons carefully consider the class that you compete in and what ammunition you're shooting. If you wanna use factory sealed ammunition, that's gonna be a nice, simple way to go. Yes. Right, and it's gonna simplify your life with power factor. Now, if you get into the tie and someone has hand-loaded, power factor calculated, you know, ammo versus this factory sealed stuff, are they gonna yeah. they gonna calculate the power factor on that? Good question. We'll I don't know that up. one. We if, have to follow up on that one. If you know the answer, drop a comment in, in the video comment section there. Um, second, uh, Definitely consider the power factor if you're hand loading and consider those environmental factors. If it's likely to be cooler, take that into account and give yourself you know, a little bit of, of headroom. And then finally, we found that the heavier bullets were favored. So that would be something to look at 
as you look at power factor and maybe what bullets you're going to buy. I know right now, difficult to find components of all types. Yeah. So you might not well, have a choice. Well, that is exactly why I did the three powder test. Because mm -hmm. I wanted to give people options, two bullets, three powders, mm -hmm. and they all do very well. You are going to have to adjust the stay ball a little bit for certain bullets. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have a few questions for you. Uh, are you competing in NRL Hunter? If so, what cartridge are you shooting? Did you choose the 6.5 PRC or the 6.5 Creedmoor or something else? A lot of different options out there. If you're hand loading, what are you using and what is your power factor number? Yeah. And then the third is what rifle you're shooting. I'm just kind of curious about that in general. Yeah. yeah, I can't wait. It's going to be interesting to see what everybody's running. Yep. Okay. So if you join me in wishing Travis good luck in these upcoming NRL Hunter matches, again, drop a comment, tell Travis way to go, you know, <laughs> good job on the power factor. <laughs> and uh, let us know what you're shooting. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Yep. That concludes this video, and that means it's time to wrap it up. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. Also, make your voice heard. If you have something to say, please drop a comment. Make sure you're subscribed with notifications because you're not going to want to miss the awesome content that is coming up. And finally, flex your reloading pride. You could look great in one of these t-shirts. We've got multiple designs at the Ultimate Reloader store. I'll see you later because I'm off to go shooting.